Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Today is Friday, May 31st, 2019. My name is Jeremy, and this is sort of my first cup of coffee. I'll tell you why in a second here. I want to thank you for tuning in. And you may notice some difference in the video quality because, yes, I am pre recording this episode. If you watch the show daily, you know that today, at this point at 6.30 a.m., I am in the air. I'm on a flight headed from Vermont to Florida train with the legendary Superfoot, Bill Wallace, as well as plenty of other people in the Superfoot slash Joe Lewis camps, people who have been on the show on Martial Arts Radio, people who are utterly fantastic people, great friends, and I'm looking forward to this for a while. It's going to be hot when I get there. Ugh, 90-something degrees every day. No, there's no beach in store for me. But I said, you know, I already shortchanged you guys. I didn't give you an episode on Monday because of Memorial Day. I wanted to do something and I'm pre-recording this. And if you're watching it, it means I figured out how to schedule it to come out at 6.30. That's been the goal all along. And probably going to do this again Monday because I get back late. But there should be a surprise for you with the one that I post for Monday. All right. Now, there are no questions, so I'm going to make up some questions in a moment here. But I'd like to remind you of a couple things. First, we've been getting some feedback on the two-minute martial arts, which you can find at training.martialart, uh, sorry, training.whistlekick.com. And this is a whole program that we're running for free. And the idea is that there's a lot you can do in two minutes a day, so check that out. Uh, there's also uh, Instagram and Facebook for Whistlekick Training. Yes, if two-minute martial arts goes well, we will expand this out into other types of programming. Uh, we have some options for some paid programming coming, hopefully. And we've got some other folks who have talked about doing some programming as well. So the goal here is to supplement to improve your martial arts training. Check that out. Uh, it being Friday, what goes on on Friday? There's nothing specific that goes on Friday, at least not when I'm away. But I would love for you to leave some questions. If you can leave some questions on this episode, that'd be fantastic. Because I'm going to try and bring on some special guests for First Cup for Monday. I mean, how, how fun would that be? So I can't tell you who it's going to be. You can guess. Um, it's probably not going to be Superfoot. <laughs> um, we are friends and I love the man dearly. But I, I don't... I don't know that we have the kind of friendship where we're going to wake up together with our first cup of coffee in our pajamas. But I do have friends like that. And so they've already said yes. So we'll see if we can make that happen. All right. So what's the first question I can ask? First question. Um, let's see. There's a lot of controversy around where martial arts originated. What do you think about that? I believe every culture structured some way of fighting. Because let's face it, if you have a, a group of people, you have a society, there's going to be conflict. Conflict inevitably, at times, turns into combat, turns into fighting. And that means that some people are going to win and some will lose. Inherently, people are going to copy the things that work, the things that the winners do. And over time, that gets refined, gets iterated. The fighting styles get better. But of course, those fighting styles are dictated by a lot of things. Terrain, clothing, access to weapons. And over time, you start to see the necessity of improving that fighting. It gets better. And then groups of people will fight with each other. And they will, again, copy what is working. So I believe a lot of martial arts, early martial arts, came from conquest. And it was spread that way. Seems to make sense to me. Now when we think about martial arts today, we are unfortunately usually thinking of Chinese, Korean, Japanese martial arts. Because that's what most of us know about and train in, statistically. This is no disrespect to anybody doing capoeira or hima or Filipino martial arts or boxing or any of the other things that we can lump under that category. But when we think about traditional martial arts, there's often this debate about, you know, the body dharma and 
traveling from India to China and karate and, and just this whole mishmash and, and where it went from one to the other. I think that trying to track it back to one person going from one place to another is probably a little too simplistic. The idea that one person spread something from one place to another place hundreds or thousands of miles away, thousands of miles away, it can happen, but I think it's more likely to be more organic. I think that things tend to spread a little more slowly and in multiple ways. You know, when we think about the, let's say, when people get the flu in the winter, it's not one person who just popped up with the flu. It originates, it spreads, it, it mutates, and it affects multiple people. And it spreads in that way. And I think that, honestly, there's a, there's likely some, some science, some mathematics behind the spreading of knowledge in that way. I've got nothing to back that up. I could do the research, but the, I'm asking myself a question. So this is my gut answer. Um, I think that that is one of both the pros and cons of us having martial arts today that we train in where we know the origin. It's cool because we get to find out what was in the, the founder's head when they started the style. And I think it's also, I think there's a con, a negative there, because it doesn't leave room for interpretation. It doesn't leave much room for advancement of the style. And that starts to separate the martial from the art as we move forward, because terrain, clothing, and societies are changing. Okay. I'll give you one more, and then we'll We'll start to wrap up. We'll make this a shorter episode because I got I got an episode of Martial Arts Radio I got to get done. Um, I might put on pants. What else? Uh, did I prepare for this? Absolutely not. What are the benefits of caffeine? There we go. Okay. Caffeine. Most of us know caffeine can wake us up. But caffeine has a lot of effects. Caffeine is a stimulant, of course. Caffeine can increase heart rate. It can increase alertness, awareness. It can interact with the, the nervous system and the fight or flight response. Oh, see, I'm not awake enough to remember the science on this. We're skipping this question. Forget I even said anything. I'll do one of these when I'm more awake. It'll probably be a martial arts radio episode. If you were restricted to one limb sparring, what would it be? Hmm. Well, assuming that I still got to stand up and walk, it would be my left foot. So, those of you that don't know, I'm a smaller man. I'm five foot seven. I'm fairly strong for my size, but I'm still reduced size compared to most people. My arm reach is not great. I've got some decent speed, some decent power out of my hands, but in order for me to punch someone, they can punch me almost 100% of the time. But I'm pretty good with my feet. So my left foot, that's the foot I use, I can obviously reach further, it's got more power, and while I may not be as fast with it, I'm fairly fast, and if I focused on kicking low, I would do okay. Now, I've played with drills like this. When I travel around, when I teach at people's schools, when I run seminars or whatever, there are a sequence of drills that I will take people through that explore this, because if you've never done it, it could be really interesting. You learn a lot about you and how you fight. And interestingly enough, some people spar better with two or three limbs than with all four. Yeah, to be honest, um, when I spar, probably 80 to 90% of what I'm doing is with my left foot anyway. So it would probably be the least disruptive. If I had to pick second, 
it would be my right foot and my left foot. I'm sorry, left hand then right hand. My right side's more powerful and my left side's faster. I'm not going to win anyone with power, beat anyone with power. I'm going to beat them with speed. Because again, I'm small. There's only so much I can put behind my strikes. I'm going to give you some some stuff to contemplate in just a moment. Don't forget, we do this show every weekday morning, 6.30 a.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube. But you can catch it later at firstcupwithjeremy.com or in your podcast feed. Search it. Find it. Help us grow the show. Help me justify waking up and sitting in a bathrobe, talking to people, drinking coffee. And let's be real. That's a weird thing. It's goofy. It's been almost a year. But people are watching it. Actually, it might be close to a year. I should look that up. If you have a question or comment, ask it below or email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Now, things to think about. We tend to get pretty focused on what we have. Sorry, we get, get blind to what we have. And it's only when we lose something we start to think about how important it was, whether that be a person or an object, a job, or a limb when we're fighting. Spend some time today observing the things that you have, the things that you use, and at the very least, give a nod to your appreciation to having those things, because there are people who don't have them, plenty of people who don't have any of those things. And maybe go a little bit deeper and think about what you would do without them. Doesn't mean you need a full-on plan, doesn't mean you need to practice anything, but just say, you know, it's great that when I go to train, I've got two hands and two feet. But maybe if I got into a self-defense situation and I was carrying a bag of groceries or a child and I didn't have access to that right hand, here's how I would change things. It's good to think about stuff. I'll see you back here on Monday for what I'm really hoping is going to be that special episode. Tune in. Take care. Peace.